Valtrin Network. Ugh. That's it. Your coronavirus has started now. You went out to the cinema. You watched no, Tenet, and now you're going to die. <laughs> What's good, guys? Welcome back to Talking at the Movies. This is our Tenant review. So, Mo, yesterday you got to see Tenant. I got yeah, to I see did. it. We saw them separately. First time in, I don't even know how many months, back in the cinema before we even oh, get into I, the film. I was going to say, that I think the, the last time I went to the cinema, I think it was January to see The Gentleman. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't even go then. But how different does it feel? It actually didn't feel that different because I normally go during the week if I can. Um, in fact, I was actually really surprised at how organized it was. They had people, like, as you come up the escalator in, into the cinema area in the shopping center, they were like, go here, go there. There was like no queuing for anything. It, in fact, there was no, I, I could get a coffee. There was no queue. Yeah, um, yeah it was actually... It's strange. It was actually a really nice, pleasant experience. It's like they've got the queuing out of the way. Uh, I think that may be just unique to you, Mo, because when we got to Cinema World, no yeah. different than it ever is. People <laughs> loitering around outside, lobby yeah. packed with people. They had masks on for the most part, yeah. most part, but it was no different. There was two queues and everything. You know what? I think that actually might be different from from my one. I tend to find if you want to buy like snacks and stuff. People also then buy their tickets, so it just takes a really long time. But because you couldn't turn up here without having pre-bought a ticket, yeah. that might have sped things up. Yeah, and I was also, because like we've seen images from um, some US cinemas where they've actually physically removed seats, I was really unsure yeah. what that experience was going to be yeah, like. Yeah, but over yeah. here, they didn't do that. No. Well, at least for my cinema anyway. No. They just, I guess, just booked out empty seats in between groups. Yeah, absolutely. But what I was really surprised about is, so so you couldn't buy seats next to you, but like literally like less than a meter behind you and less than a meter in front of you, people were able to sit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice not having people right next to you. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's always nice. Group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, obviously, we'll get into the movie and it'll probably explain why my brain's so... <laughs> but I, I normally get the experience that I'm a rich millionaire and I own the entire screening room um, and I can watch it all by myself. But I was surprised a lot of people turned out to see this yesterday. Yeah, it was actually quite a lot of people, besides the fact that it was obviously spaced out that you couldn't pack in the cinema. Yeah. That's why I'm really curious to see what the, um, what the box office for this is going to be. Yeah. But... Um, um, yeah. I, I guess one more thing to say about the cinema experience, obviously not here, but I don't know, have you heard like in the US, mm -hmm. um, they've actually decided if tenant, if, if cinemas are not open in your market, so they go city or state, mm -hmm. um, drive-ins are not allowed to show tenant. What the? Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? If it was like a movie, like a Trans Fast and Furious or something, yeah. then I'd be like, what? That makes no sense. But for a tenant type movie, I see that is not the sort of, sort of movie you watch in your car. You're not going to focus. You're not going to pay attention to what's going there, on. There probably is an element of that. I think it's also Warner Brothers saying, like, to the cinema chains, we stand with you. Because obviously cinema chains don't own drive-ins. Um, and but apparently drive-ins are their own cinema chains, though. So they should have that same respect. They are. But they're, like, independents. And they actually... And I think it's more... Apparently, drive-ins only account for something like 2% of, like, cinema attendances. So anyway, Tenet, let's get into this, man. You want to oh. read out the synopsis? So, in a twilight world of international espionage, an unnamed CIA operative known as the protagonist is recruited by a mysterious organization called Tenant uh, to participate in a global assignment that unfolds be beyond real time. The mission prevent Andrei Sator, a renegade Russian oligarch uh, with precognition abilities from starting World War III. That's not that accurate, to be honest. There's a few little details <laughs> well, in that, actually, that, that, that. That's fairly accurate. He's not trying to do... Okay, guys, we're going to be non-spoilers first for those of you in the US and any countries that haven't had a chance to view this yet where it's not released. And then when we get to the spoiler part, you know, we'll, we'll tell you straight up. So I won't get into why that isn't completely accurate, in my opinion. But general, general opinions on the movie, Mark. Um, so general opinion. So, so uh, I want to state this from the outset, right, regardless of how much moaning and bitching I'm going to do later, I enjoy this movie thoroughly. And actually, I cannot wait till I can buy it on 4K so I can watch it again um, and try and work out what the fuck happened. Hmm, yes. I don't know whether I love this movie 
No, Love's Not a Good Boy. I don't know whether I like this movie or not. I'm in this weird place where I appreciate certain elements in this where I'm like, yeah. okay, well done. But then does that well done elements make it a good movie or film? I don't know. I don't necessarily think it does. But I don't hate it, but I don't love it. It's a str- I'm, in a, I'm in limbo. I'm in oh, space yeah. between time. I'm not going forward in time. I'm not going backwards in time. I'm like stuck in the I'm, I'm really surprised because that movie, it had everything, right? It, the, it starts it's off sick. like, it, it just, it, it starts off from 0 to 60 in like, like that, right? There's Does no dicking around. Though? Does it what really? doesn't it have? What was it, it missing? Have... Dude, I stand by my criticisms from the trailer. Yep. John David Washington not a leading man. No, no. He is going to He's going to rock everybody. it. Oh, he will he's get gonna, He's going to rock the it to the A-lister now. It's always the way. These guys get, you know, like that happened with Jai Courtney. You know, he was, he wasn't, a, he's not a good actor. Yeah. He got in that Terminator movie, suddenly he's in, you know, the leads in all these movies. And then they realise, oh yeah, this guy ain't that good and he just disappeared. That's what's going to No, no, completely guy. disagree. I, I asked thought, everybody. He wasn't just my Washington opinion. Jr. Was, I asked, was fantastic. I asked everybody in my group, people I was hanging out with, and it was the same. Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, dry. but it sounds like wooden. your group. It sounds like your group did not enjoy this film. <laughs> Some of them didn't. Like, I went to see it with Asylum. If you're dad, if you're seeing this, you don't watch, listen to our podcast. Our occasional cold member of the podcast, Asylum, he gave up halfway, and he was just getting up, and moving around, leaving the auditorium, playing with his phone. I, I think his exact words to me were because I said to him, "I think you'll have to watch this film a few times." He goes. I never want to watch this film again. That's the thing with Nolan movies. There isn't a massive amount of rewatchability, I find personally. Like, even though I have watched multiple movies more than once, their his style isn't rewatchable. In this uh, one personally. absolutely is, though, because you cannot tell me you understood one hundred percent everything that happened. I honestly believe, I honestly believe, this movie for the first two thirds. Yeah, you're not supposed. You're not expected or ex- supposed to understand what's going on. I you, believe that you, they try. They he, uh, Nolan rolled the dice on the gamble that people aren't going to understand this first two thirds, and they're not supposed to. But we're going to take that risk that they stick with it until the last third, when things actually all the pieces click together, and it's like, okay, that's what's going on and how yeah, this works and even- all that. But even then, um, it, it's a film that you have to continue to think about even after you leave the cinema, right? Because there yeah. is still stuff that does not make sense. Yeah. Um, and, and some of it, actually, when you sit and think about it, you're kind of like, ah, oh, that's what happened, right? Because yeah. there's no hand-holding. They literally, sometimes all. there might be a throwaway line that explains something, but it happens so fast uh, that you don't kind of grasp it. Um, so it's, it's, not, it's not like a, a Michael Bay type film where everything oh, is explained no. out for you. <laughs> Everything's spoon fed with a little baby yeah. toddler plate in your mouth. Yeah. No, 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 no. And no. it this might is... be too much to the one extreme, right? Where actually they don't explain anything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, this was a, <clears throat> I think it was very divisive in the cinema. There were definitely people walking out. Yeah. Um, so I understand the whole mixed reviews this has been getting on release. But overall, yeah, I think the star of this was actually Robert Patterson. I think he was the most likable character he in this. He was very good. Um, I actually think um, almost the, all the cast were just absolutely perfectly cast, right? I didn't, you know what? This is like, I haven't seen Kenneth Branagh on screen for so long. Mm. I did not even realise that's Kenneth Branagh. I thought it was just like some fat Russian guy. He wasn't uh, wearing makeup. That's what Kenneth Branagh was. Yeah, but like. I, I haven't seen him in such a long time. Like the guy normally oh, yeah. directs nowadays, doesn't he? Um, yeah, that's true, that's true. Even like H- Hamish Patel, like I really rate him in some of the other things that I've seen him in, and mm. I think that that guy has got a big career in front of him. And I just liked his like deadpan kind of delivery of his lines, especially like when they were discussing the whole airport plan. Yeah, but. You honestly like the dry, wooden way that John David oh, performed. Oh, God, man. There was, no he... char- there was no charisma there. It was just, I didn't want to watch him. Like, there was nothing really? likable about him at all. Oh, no, man. I was right into his, like, before. Because he's, he's obviously a man who's been given, like, all of this knowledge. And, like, you know, there's, like... But even before he knew yeah. what was going on. 
Like he just, he was, he was, that's how he is the whole film. But I did not like when it was explained to him. This is in the trailer, guys, so it's not a spoiler. When the woman explains to him what the physics of what was happening was, why bullets were going backwards. Didn't even flinch. Like, didn't even be like, what? This, that, no natural reaction to how this is just mind baffling. Yeah, he was like, yeah, but okay, that's because, yeah, go but back that's because he, okay. yeah, but he'd already seen that with his own eyes, right? At the in in the opening sequence, and didn't freak out either. <laughs> if you saw bullets going backwards, would you not be like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah, but he was trying to get bombs out of an auditorium, so like that. You know, do you know what I mean? He could have had his freak out, but then he would have died. Uh, I, yeah, I just, there's no naturalistic behavior there. That just. What do you think uh, of um, Kenneth Branagh's wife, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth the Becky? She's always yeah. good in everything she pops up in. She's great. The problem she, she has, yeah. I want to step on what you're saying, yeah. but the problem I find she has in a lot of movies that I think it's just a Hollywood issue. Leading men in Hollywood tend to be five nine to five eleven, and she or is. 60. <laughs> yeah, and she is well up. I think she's like six four. She's a tall woman. So There's nothing drink. wrong with that. And it's a problem. No, not. But when she's standing against yeah. a little midget guy, <laughs> it don't look too cool, man. It just looks kind of silly. And in this, it looks silly multiple no, times. I, I, I can't in, say. I can't looked, say I noticed that even once. When he stood up. Yes! When he stood up to kiss her goodbye one time from the restaurant. It was like a little kid saying bye to his mom, just kissing uh, him on the cheek. It's see, like, I, I, I don't see height. I, I, the things like that don't bother me. Fine, <laughs> this is hilarious. Um, but I, she, 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 she was actually another one who did inject much needed emotion because I think she was one of the few actors, maybe the only actor that actually had a degree of emotion going from one end to the other rather than she, just stay in one lane. She actually got yeah. to do something. She did have a meaty role. Uh, the, the only thing with her role is um, I, I found it incredibly difficult to feel sorry for her because she did a typical, fell in love with a guy who was rich and powerful, uh, had his child, then realised he's a complete asshole, and then didn't know how to handle it. You know, yeah, that's yeah. a story as old as that. And that in itself could be a whole film. Yeah. So, any other non-spoiler points you want um, to get to the I, action? I, I, how did you find the action played out? I thought the action was incredibly well done. Um, that plane sequence, is in, which is in the trailer, but it was just absolutely incredible, right? It's, I don't think I've ever actually seen something like that. Um, and then, the, what the plane, what the, the, the plane sequence, where, where they're rolling it across the, the runway. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they're just driving it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was pretty cool. Um, I thought seeing the fight scene um, in, the, um, in the Freeport, was yeah. pretty cool. And I don't want to say too much about that because there is some spoilery stuff. The problem with Nolan and fight scenes, this is a problem he had in Batman. He just yeah. doesn't, I don't think he knows how to really capture fights. He does this Bourne thing where he's too close. The yeah, camera's yeah, yeah. moving around too yeah, much. Yeah. And I find it a little frustrating sometimes. Did you find, and I think we might be encroaching in slightly uh, spoiler territory here, but when they had certain fight scenes, there was really no difference between whether they were doing them like forward or backwards. It was like people were still reacting as though they were in the same sort of like time frame. It's diff that's a difficult one because the technical aspect of that and the head yeah. effery of trying to figure out one person moving forward, one person moving backwards. <laughs> it's like I don't, I don't envy that. I can't really criticize them for that issue. But yeah, but like they go to so much of pain in the rest of the film, and then all of a sudden, then the action sequence is like, well, hold on a minute, he's forward, he's backwards, but you know, it's it's not really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right to wrap up this non-spoiler segment for yeah. guys who haven't seen this yet. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Would you rate it? Me, I, I would give it a, without a shadow of a doubt. I would Dude, give this an a, a absolute camera four. down. I can barely see you. You're just peeking. You can see all of me. Would you want to see more of my? You want to see my like? Yeah. I've been sponsored by Nike. You're just like peeking out from the bottom of the screen. It's not great. So <laughs> anyway, yeah. So thumbs up. Uh, uh, absolutely, four stars. Not uh, not without shadow of a doubt. The only thing I would say is, this movie. If you've ever seen a GIF like on Twitter of someone's head exploding, yeah. your head will feel like that after this film. Yeah. Thumbs in the. Uh, no, I'll Ooh. give it thumbs up. Hold on. So I'll what do you give up. this? So out of a number, what do you give this? Man, it's such a difficult one. Do like a... Do you need to see the film again? I don't know whether I want to, though. Would the prospect of seeing this movie not entice you? I don't 
not. Uh, I think I understand enough of what I need to understand in it. That's not an issue about capturing stuff yeah. I missed. It's more of do I find the performances engaging enough that I want to relive those and the dialogue. And I don't find that I do. Like I said, I don't find Washington engaging. I find him just wooden. He doesn't have the. He doesn't have that thing that his dad has. This personality that even when there's not a lot being said, you can still see it. High, high so do you think he is where he is because of his dad? Ah, I don't know. It's too early, man. Because I, because you, I haven't seen Black Klansman. You guys said he was great. Oh, Black Klansman so, is great. But I, I've heard a lot of good things about it, so I'm not going to judge. But what? he's not that much different than Black Klansman, if I'm honest. Like really? he, he's, his acting is not dramatically different, and, and I don't find there's a problem with his acting. In the context, depending on the role, but with yeah. this, I, I would have found someone who just had a bit more emotion who could emote a little more to be, and be a bit more physically imposing as well. Because uh, like, may, that's mainly because of Elizabeth though, because she's so damn tall, it just made him look silly, <laughs> like a little kid. But yeah, still, I'm gonna go thumbs up, because technical aspect, and once it all clicks in, it is clever, and I do appreciate the work that was done. Is it a little too clever for its own good? It probably like tries are, to be. It, like people, you know like how people have been discussing the ending of Inception, like for the last 10 years? I still find that I don't really understand why some people have a problem with Inception or will have a problem following it. I find this more akin to the Matrix sequels where they just got too yeah. into the morphology and the too into the minutiae of all this philosophy and trying to add all these references that it just became over convoluted. Yeah. I find it's going down that path. Yeah, it's, I think people are going to be debating this for years to come because people are going to be saying, oh, but you need to take this into account. Oh, you need yeah. to take that into account. Yeah. 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 But. I feel like four should be, but at the same time, if I don't completely enjoy most of a movie, I only enjoy in the very end of a movie. It doesn't make yeah. a movie great. I don't, uh, oh, I'm really surprised. Three and a half is too low, so I'm, I think I'm going to have to give it four. Three and a half feels too low for this. Even though it's a two and a half hour film, right? It feels like it moves at such a rapid pace that there, was must, there must be so much have been left on the, on the cutting room floor. I have to actually agree with you there. I think my brain was doing so much work. Yeah. Deducing and deducting and putting, connecting A to B and all of this stuff. Time just... Oh, yeah, I yeah, really yeah, wasn't yeah. that caught up in, oh, this is so long. Yeah, I had more of, of that experience. Actually, no, I didn't really. I was going to say the Irishman felt longer, but he didn't. That went quick as well for me. <laughs> right. So, non-spoilers over. Let's get into spoiler territory. Where that synopsis wasn't accurate, he isn't trying to start World War Three. He's trying to end the world. Simple as. Uh, Killing himself, and he's well, using the algorithm to end the world. That's not yeah, but yeah, yeah, but they don't want to tell you that in a synopsis, right? Because doesn't the doctor who explains the inversions to begin with say that the, someone's trying to start World War Three, or we're trying to stop World War Three, rather? Yeah, that's a different group that are doing that, though. That's that's the people in the future. That sending this, these uh, objects yeah, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't really want to like tell that in your synopsis, right? But it's misleading. Though. <laughs> this falls apart for me to a degree in the logic of how it tackles. Granted, this is a out of. I know you love this partly because you love time travel stuff. This was a very different take on time this, travel, right? This no one's very, done take no, on time yeah, travel yeah. like this before. That's it's a proper original. But. There's an issue there with the whole, the paradox of which they, they, they explain this in the film. If you were to go back in time, kill your grandfather, would that mean you would cease to exist? Or are you on a separate divergent timeline where you would still continue on? What's happened in your past has already happened. You can't change it. And it, the basis is that there's a group of people in the future where the world is fucked, pollution, war, it's destroyed the world. So they feel that to save the world, they're going to destroy the past. But they think that they're on a separate timeline, that it won't d destroy them, that they'll still exist. But it will fix the, the, the world, which doesn't make sense, because how can you destroy the past and feel like it's not going to affect you and you're still going to live? Is, is but that the world... What you, it, no, that's that what, what they explained. That's, that, I... that's what they, they explained it. That's, they, they explicitly said that that's what their aim was. I took it more as in like they will destroy the the past because the future is so fucked up and the whatever future is built is is better than what they're living in. 
But if you destroy the past, there is no future. If you believe that one is connected to the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, it's like the, for the greater good, right? I'll give up my life to the hope that the people that are there will, will have a better future. But Robin Patterson and Washington specifically say, yeah. do they believe that it won't destroy them? And it's like... Yeah, but it's all, it, it's, it's all like conjecture, right? They don't actually know because the, the rules are never really defined because they talk about the grandfather paradox, but they mm. never really... There's no plot in the film where they actually do that to show what would happen. Yeah, I guess we aren't, we're not supposed to know whether it would happen or not. But from what I've got from the script and what people were saying is that the people in the future who were sending this stuff back expected that they would continue on, but would have a better world to live in. Which wouldn't make sense because how's the world going to fix itself and they will still exist in that world? Well, I, I'm guessing Falls like apart. we are. I, I, th I think there's more of an ecological message here, right? Ecological, ecolog. You know the word I'm trying to say. Um, it's more around like you're polluting your world. If we destroy you, you stop polluting, and there's more. There's a better world for us in the future. But they won't be there though to enjoy it. That's the, they that's won't. But somebody at. else. But somebody else will. They won't because they're <laughs> destroying humankind. Mankind will yeah, end. I, no I one will think, be left. Yeah, I don't think they were planning to destroy everyone, really, were they? But that's what they said. The algorithm would, would, would do. Be, there would, would, would be survivors. It would end everybody. Yeah. Oh. I don't even think that's. I don't even think this is the most head fuck part of the film. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know what? It's a shame that the title Looper was taken by another film, which I love also. But I reckon this movie should have been called Looper because that is truly <laughs> explains what, how they, the, the time travel mechanism. You basically, people are looping around. They're going through these devices, which we never really explained how they worked, but you know, whatever, you're just supposed to just go along with it. And they, yeah, it loops around and people just going around in circles, <laughs> multiple circles in time through these devices. It's trying to understand that whole thing is just mind boggling, right? Because... What aspect? Because I think once it clicked in and how there was, they were but, doing it. But some bits of it didn't click until after I actually left the cinema, right? So I'm going to give you an example. Mm. You know, uh, the first time they go through the revolving door uh, to the other side. So they've got like Elizabeth in the, um, in the trailer. She's, she's been shot. And she got shot, um, yeah. Yeah, and um, Washington Jr. basically goes rushing out. He's got his breathing mask on. So they set the rules out. Like, everything's reversed on this side. Yeah. Um, everyone's going backwards. You're going forwards. Nothing behaves as it is. Um, he And you can't change what's already happened. Exactly, right? Yeah. So, so basically, they make it back to, to Freeport. They go through the revolver. So they come back to normal time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then, then they even show a scene where Washington goes and speaks to Priya to say in two days time, you're going to sell me some, you're going to sell me an idea about selling some plutonium. Yeah. This was an issue. Me and Uz spoke about this. They, he yeah. actually went back again, but they didn't show it. And that, yeah, they lot, don't that show threw that. people off. Then he goes in the trailer and he's wearing like the thing. And you're kind of like, what the fuck is going on here? Is he forward? Is he backwards? And then I realized after I'd left and I was walking home, the trailer was actually in, in the was actually going backwards in a forward mm. time. Yeah, so you're kind of like you go in the trailer because the trailer had never gone back with them. Mm. It was traveling in a different thing, so they could use it indefinitely to keep traveling backwards in time. The trailer was going back yeah. in time. Yeah, because oh, like, well. if you because because the trailer never never went back with them. It was always, it, 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 yeah, it's really weird to explain. Okay, to, I get what you're really, saying, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do you see what I mean? Because oh, when yeah, they I went in the, he would go in the trailer and he'd have to put the mask on because he couldn't breathe the air. Mm, yeah. Or the other way around. And the explanation for this breathing apparatus is that when they're going backwards, they're no longer yeah. breathing in oxygen, they're breathing in carbon dioxide, which is what we breathe out, yeah. which we can't breathe it back in. So, yeah, yeah. it's just a, whole, it's a whole bunch of stuff that was never really explicitly yeah, laid never. out. And what they also don't explain, right, when, when they have to take Elizabeth through because she's been shot, the, the guy explicitly says, where do you expect to exit from, right? So it's, it makes it sound like there aren't too many places that you can exit back into, like, the normal time flow. Yet the battle in the end, Robert Patterson's going backwards and forwards. And it's like, how is he doing that? Yeah, but no, because he, he knows he's going to end up dying because we, yeah. we saw that he, he gets shot. Yeah, but, but we don't know does, it was him. Yeah, but how does he go back? How does he like sometimes go inverted? Sometimes he comes uninverted. We saw that there was a there was a revolving thing there. 
in the in where that... the battlefield was. Yeah, in that. Oh, facility. was it right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it's kinda... just like fucking just so much going. I think my brain must have just like just lose track after at that well. point. <laughs> it yeah, and then and then at the end, Patterson reveals that yeah, we've known each other a lot longer than you think. You actually recruited me. Yeah, but time travel is such a weird thing in this world where you can't just instantaneously leap to a place in time. You have to actually tr- physically travel. So it takes yeah. a long time. So if him and Patterson have known each other for years, that means he has to spend years moving backwards, which is a fuckery head fuck to think of. No, no, because I'm assuming he meets Patterson in the future. In No, in Washington's future, but it's Patterson's yeah. past. That means it's in the, back when he was younger. So he already knew Washington before he met him because he knew he was already, he'd already been recruited. That's how he began his relationship. So Washington, at some point, has to go further yeah. back in order to recruit oh, Patterson. Okay, I see what you mean. And he's spending years going backwards. Yeah. Like, which so, is so literally, like, so, so basically to explain it, so if you want to go one year into the past, you literally have to live one year, one year. in the inverted world. Yeah. How the fuck do you do that? Exactly. Yes, little things, little deals like that just kind of... Uh. Yeah, yeah. And then at that, towards the end, I completely lost the plot, right? Because you know where they get um, Elizabeth to go on the yacht? Yeah. Because uh, Washington says to her, you should stay in here a few days longer because you need to go further back. And you're kind of like, well, hold on a minute. Surely she's going months back if it was like to a holiday. And then there's stuff I got really confused about, right? Because in, at the beginning of the film, she's, she's explaining how she saw a woman dive off the yacht. Yeah, which was her. Yeah. Which, was, which was her. But she goes, I also then saw her husband dive off and disappearing. She never saw him again. And you're kind of like, but you did because he's still here. I don't remember that line. I remember the line with the woman diving. Yeah, I don't no, remember her saying like, he dived off. I just remember yeah, yeah. her saying she wished she could be like that woman and be this. Yeah, free. I'm pretty sure she said like he dived off and I've never seen him again. And it kind of like this is just weird. I need to watch uh, this film again. That might have to be checked again because yeah, he he yeah because she wasn't she didn't witness him get pushed yeah, yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Before. So I don't know. I might have to look yeah. that bit. But yeah. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Such a mad. A it is mad, a crazy. And I wonder if, like, I wonder if this film, the whole point that Nolan has done this film is like to get just people just to talk about the mad plot. Yeah, but you're trusting. There is a lot of trust put in the audience to, to even stick with it to that point, because, like I said, like I was saying at the beginning, two thirds. You don't know what's going on. It doesn't explain anything. People are just jumping around back and forth. I actually kind of guessed when Patterson I, was chasing that guy in the hallway with the black suit yeah. and then he stops and was like I thought that I, maybe he saw himself I didn't guess that it was Washington that he saw but yeah. I presume that it might be himself from a different timeline so I don't know if in, if in that first two thirds they don't give you all the rules but I don't think there's anything in there that makes you think oh, hold on I can't follow this there are certainly things that are said and done it's the inversion stuff that just makes yeah. no sense and it yeah, just yeah. there's no logic in it where I'm thinking, this doesn't... How? You walk into a room and there's already bullet holes. Yep, yep, yep. Then at some point, where... How can I... If you're going... It's just, <laughs> the, oh. bit I really, the bit I didn't really get is, um, you know, um, at the beginning where the doctor is explaining to him the rules and how this thing's happened, right? Yeah. And he, ha- he hovers his hand over the, the bullet, but it won't come back. And she goes, to do that, you have to have dropped the bullet. You have to, yeah. So you have to yeah. move. You have to put your hand there with intent of right, right. So when yeah. he fires the gun in the room, mm. that we're, we're, right, the very first time he doesn't know anything about this, yeah. so he's not firing those bullets with intent. There again, yes, very true. Very those true. Those bullets come backwards. Very true. Yeah. Because uh, he doesn't know that at that point, right? So there's lots of yeah. little things like that. Little things that just don't quite add up. Yeah. There was something else you mentioned I was going to mention. Well, I'm glad now. There's so many things to keep... So many moving parts you have to keep track of that I've completely lost the plot on that one. Ah, oh, it's a shame. But it's, it's a fascinating movie. Yeah. It's Better leave like, I was going to say, this, this, is, this is like where the, the divide in cinema is going to happen, right? So this is like... And I'm hesitant to use the word intelligent, but it is a very complicated film versus your average blockbuster like Fast and the Furious that will absolutely gross a billion dollars. People come out feeling good after watching that. It's partly maybe the fact you have to think a lot to keep track of all the moving parts. 
But I think for the, even more so, it's more about patience, which most people, as each generation goes by, has less and less of. Yeah, but I'm I'm a prime example of that, right? I I literally I I can't take slow films. I can't take films that take take too Ooh. long to get to the point. You love but, slice of life anime where people don't do anything but just run around holding hands, saying how much they yeah, love each other. Yeah, but that's that's the Seinfeld thing. That's just life, right? I, I hate movies that are pretentious. Whereas this, a lot of people saying it was like pretentious rubbish, but like to me. It was like there, there is a story there. It takes a little while to unfold, but the pace of it moves at a rock solid pace. I think this is why they didn't want it to be a home release because there's so many distractions at home with your phone sitting on the couch. People would have just yeah fallen off of this way before you get to the yeah. I know. mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I can certainly see why people aren't liking it, and I, I did actually kind of think Sane was probably not going to enjoy this. <laughs> yeah. I can, see, no... <laughs> I can see looking at me from the side of the eye. There's a part of me thinking that he was thinking, please, let's just go. Let's just give up on this now. <laughs> so I just purposely just ignored him. I'm paying attention. Yeah. I'm not moving. I'm seeing this through. Um, but to me, the, there is a genius in this film, and it's going to be such a shame um, if this film is just remembered for being convoluted and nonsical. Yeah, the car chase scene was something pretty... I think that was the best, for me, action scene. Oh, the... the both so, sides of it. Both sides of the car chase. If you put them both together, from forward and backwards. And, and I think that's that was one point where I actually thought, hold on a minute, why the fuck... It, when you see it for the first time, it's like, mm. why is this guy driving backwards? Why is he not just turning around? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, it, you know, you've got to wait then about 45-odd minutes before you get the answer to that. Exactly. It's like, what? what? What's going on? Why is this crash car also going backwards when it looked like it was a civilian car, but we knew that it wasn't? Yeah. That whole bit where uh, they surround um, the, the truck with the, with, the, uh, with the part for the algorithm. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty cool and, and really well yes, done. Yeah, well. that was cool. Yeah. That was cool. That like, was cool. Like, like they can't stop the truck because they're monitoring the truck to see if it's still moving, right? Yeah. So they're literally just like surround it and keep it going. Brilliant. Yeah, man. Yeah. So many. I should have taken notes, to be honest. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, there's so many things that I know I'm going to forget. It's inevitable. A movie like this, there's always going to be things we're going to forget that we want to mention and whether it worked for the film or worked against it. What, what, what did you think of that opening sequence? Because that was like, you know, it's just rapid fire right into it. There's like no setup, no introduction to the characters, just wham, bam. Yeah, you kind of only enjoy it for the sake of it was just a spectacle. You don't really know what's going on. Why are they separate from the actual Russian police? Who yeah. are they representing? Who is this guy that they seem to be rescuing? Yeah. And he seems to be a plant, an yeah. agent of some kind. And then the backward stuff happens in this level. Yeah, it is one of the few times, because I've always wondered in films why they don't do this. You know when people see bombs? Yeah. And it's kind of like, well, if it's got a timer and you can pick the fucker up, why not just pick him up and throw it somewhere like out of harm's way? <laughs> That's true, but in logic, people panic, in it? And even when it's just a timer, they know this is an yeah. explosive. Yeah. And, and they run. do that here. <laughs> yeah, they do. Which was a... A flute, because I was thinking if I fucking tried to throw it up on the balcony, that usually takes you know two what? or three attempts. You know, that was my very thought. I go, <laughs> like, what if, if I was to throw my girly throw, that thing would hit the window <laughs> and bounce right, bounce back, right and, back and explode right in my face. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's a uh, cool film. It's almost as if the people who write Dark decided to write a movie. <laughs> and this is the sort of what it would be. And I yeah. think that may have helped you as well, Mo. I think that may help both of us. The fact that we kind of had that dark experience to train our brains to actually pay attention to this head fuckeries. Well, I think this is, this is what actually sets this film apart, right? It's the fact that you don't have time to space out and start thinking about other things. You've really got to concentrate. So it really holds like your, your attention. And I would love to have got Salim's thoughts on here to see what his thought process was. Was it like... Was it just so complicated that he just stopped focusing on the film completely? Uh, yeah, maybe. But I, yeah, I just feel like I feel like that's the case. You just don't have any answers to all these questions. And I think you don't have any answers at the end either, because there's so many things that are like it's it's almost like could there be a spin-off or a sequel? I, whew, that depends. I don't even think we're gonna. I don't think Nolan really does a lot of that besides the Batman's. Maybe in some novelization or some other format, but I don't think in the cinematic world we're going to. But you could, though, because you want to know what's going on with the past, how they sent these things back, and how the woman who invented this, the Oppenheimer of the future, 
why did she decide to just take pieces of it apart and send them to different times? Why didn't she just physically destroy them? Um, you know what? I hadn't even thought about that. I, I and, and that's a really good point, right? Because generally most of these films have that little plot point. Like, yeah. why didn't they just give the ring to the eagles to fly into, like, Mount Doom? Yeah, from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very true. Exactly. Just put one of the pieces, or even if it's just one piece in yeah. molten metal, done. Yeah. Gone. Um, and, and if you've invented it once, chances are you can invent it again under torture. <laughs> exactly. And even uh, I think did she say she was going to kill herself? Oh, did she? Right. Okay. But, fine. but surely but, she has it, a team around her. Every scientist, yeah. every inventor has a team. Absolutely. They don't do it on their own. Scientific discoveries happen in parallel, right? If one person discovers it, it's only a matter of time uh, that other people were probably doing similar work and, and would have discovered it as well. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And the fact that there's still, even though she has this device. The the, the 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 revolving doors, whatever the fuck they're called, out, did they even give them a proper name? Just turn. No, I, I don't think they do. It's like, how the fuck were they there in the past? Yeah, they seem to be everywhere. So yeah. kinda, you don't even, yeah. If you got those, how, then, yeah. How were people just not randomly walking into them? Yeah, to be like, what's this? What's going on? And suddenly, yeah. Vroom, vroom, vroom. So mad. Uh, well, not even doing that, they wouldn't even be able to breathe. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. They'd go through it and die. That the first exposure that you get to that, you know, that scene where um, Branner is basically holding Elizabeth um, at, w with a gun. Yeah. And you've got like uh, Washington on the other side of like, and they're having this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't that just the weirdest thing you've like ever seen in a film? That was crazy. I'm thinking, so what? Hold on. Why is he going backwards over there? Is it ability he has? And then you see the other Branner come through. And it's like, oh, there's two of them. There's one from the past, one, one from the future, one from the past. And then that's, that's, that's actually the scene where it all clicks, where you actually find, where you figure out the mechanism of the whole thing, that they're just kind of uh, going in a loop. No, I mean, I, th I think that was the only moment that they really explained anything, right? Because you have Soldier yeah. Boy, he comes in, who says, yeah. if you do this, you do that. And you're kind of like, right, what the fuck? <laughs> I think physically seeing it, though, that just, for me, just made everything yeah. suddenly make sense. It, not everything, but most things. Did um did the fact that it was actually Washington in that cover up stuff um that he fights at the beginning of the film did that all kind of make sense? Did, was that just or was it? Did it actually make narrative sense, or was that just done for coolness? I think mainly for coolness. But the biggest point of that fight, which didn't make sense, is the fact that backwards Washington in the military SWAT team get up yeah. tries to shoot past Washington. Because that's where the bullet holes in the yep, window came from. Yep, yep, Why yep. would you try and shoot yourself, especially when you know that that's you? Because he had the gun in his hand and he, tried, yep. he did the shots, multiple shots. Yep. Why would you try yep. and shoot your past self? Just another bit that doesn't make sense, really. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, unless, maybe he unless, wanted to put to the test of the whole grandfather, put everything in jeopardy just to see if that grandfather yeah. paradox actually worked. Unless there is actually something that we've missed about this film and him shooting him past self has no ramifications on his future. That's the grandfather thing, isn't it? We don't know whether it does or not. Are you on a separate timeline from your past self? So are we saying, is this Avengers-style time travel or Back to the Future-style time travel? More of it. Ooh. Is it is, isn't is the it, Avengers one, like, if you whatever you do in the past doesn't really affect the future type thing? I think that's more what Patterson keeps saying. What's happened's happened. You can't change it. Yeah. That's why I wouldn't let Washington stop him from yeah. going back. It's like, I'm going to die. You know, I've got to say one thing about Patterson. I'm like constantly like amazed that he's still not a teenager because obviously all I know him from like is the Twilight stuff. Yeah, is this the first time you've properly seen him in something? Yeah, I think. Well, he was in that. Um, he was in that film on on Netflix. Um, the, yeah, he wasn't yeah, much of a role. He's really, really, I think this might be the first proper film I've seen him in, and he actually comes across as a smooth. See, he's a good suave, actor. Isn't he? Yeah, no, he was really good. Actually, he was really good. Um, I'll be now. I'm a little bit more interested in seeing like his portrayal as uh, Bruce Wayne. Yeah, and I but feel he's more al almost a James Bond in the making type thing. There, really, he could he's actually be look. very. Yeah, he's tall. He's kind of problem is he doesn't like working out. Even for Batman, he didn't want to work out. And James Bond has to have some level of fitness in him, man. Did he actually say he doesn't like working out, or was it that he didn't want to keep that regime up during the pandemic? That's an excuse you make when you don't want to work out. You say, because that's the perfect situation to do it during the pandemic, when you've got nothing uh, else to, to strive I, for. I don't know, because you, you, you don't know how long it's going to go on for, and you've just got to keep doing this grueling schedule every day, where actually yeah, all you want to do is eat burgers, eat burgers and watch Netflix. Great. 
But uh, oh, what was I going to say? Ah, oh, shit. What was it? What was it? What was it? You, uh, you know, one thing we haven't mentioned is um, the character of, of Priya. Uh, she's obviously like a, um, a huge Bollywood um, actress. Ah, uh, Dimple. Dimple. Um, I, I was actually quite impressed with her as well. Um, um, arms dealer, though. Does she, does she scream arms dealer to you, though? She she came across like there might be the hint of a psychopath behind um, that calm, measured um, exterior of hers. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't sold on the psychopath on on the arms dealer element of her. I, but I guess but I just I, had I, this cliche yeah. image in my head of what an arms dealer is supposed to be. I just like the fact that like because it's because she's Indian, she used her husband as a front, <laughs> uh, made, made everyone think like, and then she could just walk around in like the plane open um, and, and just live normally. Yeah, I kept thinking there was a possibility that when Washington had the gun to the, the dude, that she was gonna pull a gun on Washington from the other side and be like, "You got the wrong one." Yeah, and I like right at the end where where Washington goes. I had it wrong all this time, right? I thought I was working for you, whereas really you were you were working for me. Yeah, he actually, yeah, and she really was. Uh, and you know that they never referred to his name. He's a pro- protagonist yeah, yeah. the whole time. I did not realize that until I actually read that when I got home. Fucking mad. That's mad. Yeah, I was gonna say I I never take in people's names in film. Hence why I call them like by their actual names. Um, mm. But yeah, that's absolutely mental. And the fact that they actually use the word protagonist quite often. And I thought they were using that more in a literary sense. Like they, they were just calling him the hero of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, dude, so many things that I know we're forgetting, but we've been going on way. I thought this was going to be like a 10 minute review. (laughs) (laughs) We're nearly an hour. So dude, we've already given our rating. I guess force a confident four stars from Mo and Mm -hmm. a semi confident, not so confident four stars from me. Maybe we can say this is an ed- we'll basically re-review this film like in about like when it comes to home video and yeah. we can watch it again. We may and it, the rating may change. It may do indeed, dude. So Tenant, two thousand twenty. How will it do? Will it bring people back to the cinemas, or are people going to be waiting for what Wonder Woman's the next big one? Uh, we've got Black Widow and Wonder Woman still left, right? And yeah. Dune at the end of the year. I'm not hearing air. I freaking Dune's going to get pushed. I'm not. We, there was a trailer for Black Widow, but I'm not seeing any other promotion for it online. Wonder Woman is the only thing I'm really seeing. A lot really, of I was about. actually really surprised that we actually had the new Wonder Woman trailer in. My yeah, screen. yeah, yeah. We got the, we got like the very first Black Widow one. There's been like two or three since, but we got the very yeah. first one. Oh, why they do that? Well, they show the old ones. Well, the fact that they showed that they actually are capable of like having something drop like at the weekend and then having like. It available on cinema screens. Yeah, and everything was coming soon. They didn't want to give a date. They didn't want to commit to a date for anything. In do, you, do you feel a bit cheated that we didn't get to see the Dune trailer? Um. Oh, wait, well, is Warner Brothers in it? It, uh, it? it probably is. Yeah. Because because it, yeah. it's, it's it's attached to the US uh, screenings. Yeah. Because it's a cinema exclusive. The trailer is not debuting online until the 9th of September. Oh, so they're definitely getting it. Oh, yeah, the in the US. Yeah, yeah. In the US, it is attached to the tenant screenings. When does it come out in the States? Uh, I think like the 1st of September, which is like, I think next Tuesday. Okay, so not long. A week away. I can wait. Oh, so you're saying it's not going to come out until the 9th, did you say? Online. Uh, yeah, online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bitch. It's like back to the old school days. Yeah, trying to really find any way to drag people <laughs> into the cinemas. That's yeah. a bastard. Why did we not get that? Maybe they're still cutting it. Maybe they finished it. Perfect. Um, I don't know, because I, I'm sure I saw a video today of somebody's breakdown of having seen the trailer. Oh, there was footage shown out, I think, one of the other online Comic Cons, so maybe. Yeah. All oh, right. Anyway, so from me to Reese. Meet Mo. See you guys next week. Mm.